Hey, good afternoon, folks. It's Steve, KI5JUF. Hope everybody's doing okay out there this Saturday. So today I've got a video um, on a subject that I've been doing a lot of research on is quarter wave antennas. <clears throat> and one of my plans is uh, I'm currently a general right now, and I have really got some interest now at becoming an amateur extra. And part of that journey is a lot of... Um, things that involve antennas, resident frequencies, and so forth. So what I'm doing is I am going through and I'm taking, for example, one antenna at a time, and I'm going through and I'm learning as much as I can about the antenna, about, and I'm watching a lot of YouTube videos and stuff. So what I thought I would do is go ahead and kind of document everything the way I'm learning it, or at least the way I'm understanding it, and maybe that might give you guys, uh, you know, if you might have an interest in maybe becoming a general or even an amateur extra, it might give you some interest in uh, uh, digging a little deeper into the uh, uh, the fascinating world of antennas. So, with that said, uh, today I'm going to cover the quarter wave antenna. Uh, basically, what I want to talk about is I want to review the uh, antenna and some of the uh, characteristics of feed point impedance and how this interacts with your SWR. Uh, there's, a, there's a wide variety of quarter waves, anywhere from 70 centimeters all the way up to 160. Uh, there are ground planes that are actually uh, for 20 to 160 meters, and some of these are so large that you actually have to mount them on a uh, metal plate on the ground and uh, run radials, so that a lot of space. So what also what I'm kind of seeing is a, a relationship between quarter wave and horizontal half wave dipole antennas, and I want to show you that relationship because I think it's kind of a, a common thread there. The last thing is um, I want to show the importance of what we call impedance or feed line uh, impedance, and uh, I want to show you. Uh, how the uh, some of the configurations of the quarter wave antenna can change your antenna f characteristic feed line uh, back to your radio, which can affect your SWR. And lastly, one of the things that you guys will learn over time is uh, it's all about impedance and matching and uh, capacitance and uh, inductance and reactance. And uh, these all, all these things work together in a very magical way. Uh, I do not profess to be a math professor, but this is part of my journey just to have a, 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 you know, get an awareness of it. And that's kind of what I'm doing here with this video. I want to go over the quarter wave antennas, some SWR calculations, and a quick look at some of the examples of some of the antennas. The quarter wave antenna has a vertical radiator. This length is typically a quarter wave, and then there can be cases where the vertical can be 5 8 uh, and other combinations, typically uh, not more than a 5 8 wave, and there's a reason for that. The quarter wave is the most common, and it is a resonant link, which makes it a popular choice. This is the radiator right here that you see right here, this little guy. And uh, I like this uh, eraser here. This is pretty cool. This little drawing thing, this program has a drawing thing. Second thing is important on a quarter wave antenna are the radials. Uh, there's radials that can be mounted at the base of the antenna, and that's what you see right here. It does matter depending on if you have them horizontal or 90 degrees to the mast. This one here is 45 degrees to the mast, and that's important. The importance is the feed line impedance. In this combination, you have 37 ohms. In this one here, you have 50 ohms. So that's important. The radials, uh, the uh, vertical radials, need to be the same length as the vertical radiator. So if you have a quarter wave here, this also needs to be a quarter wave. And that's very, very important, especially when the radials are mounted at the base uh, uh, of the antenna up in the air. Typically, you want to be at least a quarter wave uh, height above ground or more. This shows you the ground radials. This is typically what you might see where you have the antenna actually mounted on the ground. You can see right here. The difference is, and this is something we want to come back to later, is you've got 37 ohms here in this configuration, 50 ohms here. In this configuration, you've got 30 ohms. And all these are important because I'm going to show you how we do the SWR calculations here on the next couple of slides.
Feed point impedance, that's a critical thing. And you also have reactive or feed line impedance. It's all kind of a combination. Typically on this type of antenna, you typically, they have these uh, mounted on the ground. Now when the ground radials are on the ground, for example, the length here is not important. You can have these any length you want them. You know, it's not, doesn't have to be a quarter wavelength. But on this one antenna here, you, these have to be a quarter wavelength. They have to be a quarter wavelength, which matches this here. So how to calculate frequency real quick. Uh, it's very simple. Just take 234 and divide it by the frequency, and that will give you the uh, length of each radiator, or vertical and horizontal. And then you take that and you multiply that by 12, which will give you the number of inches. Here's one for 2 meter. Same, same formula. CB radio. This one here is 20 meters. Look how tall that is. That's 197 inches, 16 feet. So let's talk about SWR. Why are these feed point impedance important? It is because the impedance of your radio by design is 50 ohms. So you ideally, to have a fully resistive antenna and no reactance or inductance uh, uh, or capacitance or inductance, you want to have a 50 ohm feed line and antenna combination. So this example here, we talked about this is 37 ohms. In this configuration here, horizontal, you do the math and that gives you an SWR of 1.33. This combination here, we talked about when we lowered the radials at a 45 degree angle, the feed point impedance becomes 50. Well, guess what? Magically, your radio is also 50 ohms. So guess what happens there? you have an SWR of a flat line, or basically 1.0. A perfect match. Total resistance, no, re, uh, no reactance going on anywhere in this feed line system. This is a perfect, perfect situation. This shows you an idea with a mesh radiator. Same principle, except, for example, imagine a wire screen. This would be probably the best situation because you have such good, good surface here. And again, that, that signal, when it transmits, it bounces off of here, and that's what sends it up to the ionosphere. It basically just kind of goes out in this direction. And it shoots up to the ionosphere. Here we go. Now what's interesting is we have a 50 ohm impedance at a 45 degree angle. If we go to a 15 degree angle, our impedance goes up to 70 ohms, which again here, that gives us a SWR roughly around 1.46. But so look at something here. 90, we have 37 ohms at 90 degree radius, 50 ohms at a 45, 50 ohms again at 45, 70 ohms at 15 degrees. Now this is where I'm going with this. If you have a ground antenna, you have a 30 ohm impedance, and again, with 30 ohms, your radio is at 50 ohms. This is your SWR would be 1.6. And keep in mind on the 991A, the, the, F, the automatic antenna tuner can fix all of these. It can actually uh, uh, provide a uh, fully re, uh, resistive uh, image to your receiver so that you can take these SWR readings down to 1.1. And I've got some videos on that you can watch. Here's a feed line impedance of a ground, a ground antenna. Again, 30 ohms. So check it out. This is kind of where things get a little cool. Look at this. 37 ohms, 90 degrees. 50 ohm impedance, 45 degrees. 70 ohm impedance, 15 degrees. Check this out. This is a functional antenna. It's, it's a vertical. The radio just happens to be down here. But it's also a dipole. So I may not be 100% correct on this, but the relationship I see here, as these radials start going down or projecting down, the impedance is going to change 90 degrees, 45, 15, 73. That is, I think that is, is, is a relationship, uh, and I think this is correct. So if it's not, someone let me know in the comments, uh, but this is, you know, I have to put things in an image or in a relationship where I can see one and the other. So, uh, pretty cool. Here we go again, 15 degrees. 
73 ohms. So guess what? If we take this vertical and flip it horizontal, 73 ohms. And I think this is, I think this is correct. Uh, literally, the quarter wave antenna in this configuration here has one ground radiator. This is the radiator. This is the transmit the vertical radiator for the signal. This is your reflection radiator. So this may not be 100% correct, but it's it's something that I see a relationship. So if it's wrong, hey, you know what? We'll uh, someone let me know and I'll we'll fix it. Here's the radiation pattern. Antennas, uh, quarter wave antennas, uh, just real quick, um, Arrow is a good brand. They have a lot of uh, fun little antennas, not too expensive. You can mount them up, real lightweight. They've got one for six meter, two meter, 440, 146, has dual elements here. This is a Hustler. What I want to show you here is, uh, you know, some of these are pretty high. And I'll put all the links in the bottom of the video. This is a mono band, 12 or 10. This is the 20 meter. The height is 17 feet. Something like this you might mount on the ground. Here's the 40 meter. Check out the weight is 8 pounds here. The height is also 35, but check out the weight, 18 pounds. That's a lot of weight for an antenna. This is the... Uh, 80 meter 35 pounds look at the price on that <laughs> and the last one is the 60 meter so in a nutshell um, this is my understanding here's a tip a base plate that they typically put this is the radiator plate that they would actually run the different radiators out in different directions So to sum it up, quarter wave antennas have many configurations to allow various feed points within uh, usable range of the 991A. If you take a quarter wave antenna and lower the radial to the same angle as the mass, this would re represent a vertical dipole, and I think it would work perfectly. Uh, do your own research. Tons of YouTube videos are well prepared and explained deeper than I'm able to with my current knowledge. And again, understand how 50 ohm impedance works. This is going to be a very critical part of your learning curve because if in feed line, and antenna impedance is the magic to having good SWR and understanding uh, how those work in reactance and resistance and uh, capacitance and inductance, all that's important. And I don't profess to be an expert, but I'm going to learn because I eventually am going to get my extra. So that's my plan. All right, guys, thanks again. And uh, 73 from CAF5JUF. And I hope this helps. This is just something I'm throwing up there because what, the way I learn things is, is visualization. And I try to present that in a PowerPoint so at least, you know, I can, you know, try to make sure relationships and stuff. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. I'll make some more videos on dipoles and stuff. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, this will give you something to think about. Uh, again, 73 from KF5JF, and thanks for watching.